welcome back. Got some stuff that came in today for a project I'm about to start. So, another Mamba Monster 8 S E X C or E C X. Yes, C. Can't even talk. But I've been waiting for this for a while. It is a complete censored system. I do have the ESC in uh, my limit list. And that ESC is truly amazing. So, everybody says they're having a hard time getting them right now. But, guess what? If you're looking just for the ESC, very hard to get. But there's actually a lot of these kits available. Now, um, I have ordered. I've had this motor, which somebody said they had in stock. I went ahead and ordered it because I saw them on a live saying that they had this motor. So I ordered it along with a Max 5 ESC. And that was 12 or 13 days ago. They said that they would get it out to me. Um, after eight days, I sent him a message saying, hey, um, all he was waiting on was the Max 5 that he said he ordered. Um, I'm not going to name names, but um, he said he got the Max 5 in, but could no longer locate the 2028 motor. And which was upsetting because it put my build off, it put it back a week um, because I had ordered everything. I always order parts for my next project a week ahead of time, sometimes two weeks ahead of time. Um, that way I'm never down on content. So I literally been waiting for this stuff for and in, including this mount which he said he was going to look into and get back to me so i didn't take a chance on the mount i went ahead and ordered this right away myself because having two or three doesn't really matter same thing with uh, this combo um, after eight days and i sent him a text saying what's going on and he said he could no longer locate the motor I just went ahead and ordered the stuff up myself and six days later everything showed up um, just like it should have. Um, but I'm now 14 days I think with this company. I'm still waiting for him to tell me he's got the parts so I can pay for them and send them out. Good thing is I wasn't charged for the parts up front. but. I'd rather be charged and get my parts than not charged and not receive anything. But long story short, I have this system now, um, which I'm going to run the Mamba Monster X 8S. And I'm going to run this Coke can motor um, in the Creighton 8S. So I have two Creighton 8S's and one of them in doing my poll with both of them I asked should I go all out on one and leave one stock and everybody's like yes so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna go all out M2C racing and big motor and all that stuff on one of the builds and then leave the other one as close to stock as possible so here is this motor wow even a censored wire but this thing is massive look at that here let me let me grab a 1406 yeah this thing is just insane I do like how they give you the sensor port either on top or in the back. That's pretty cool, depending on how close you are to mounting this motor. 
I never knew that because all my censored wires have always been in the back on my castle systems. And sometimes that creates a problem when, especially on the limit list, when you want to keep both battery trays and you're butted up against um, the steering, you really need that top port, which to see that is awesome. So yes, here we go, 800 KV, a 2028. We're gonna go ahead and throw this in the Crate Nate S. And we are gonna run it on 3434. And see how that thing wakes up. God, this thing is massive. This is uh, my first 2028 motor. I've, uh, I've never bought one before. I do a lot of speed stuff, so having a motor of this size was never a necessity. I've always ran big ESCs and smaller motors. So here's the 8S, the new ESC through Castle that everybody's saying they're having trouble getting. Um, but when I ordered this, I ordered this, I want to say Monday. Um, I got this six days later, so, um, I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to get this and that's why I ordered a Max 5 through the other company. I didn't even bother looking for this when, uh, I heard everybody talking about it's impossible to get one of these right now. I was like, great. And that's the ESC I really wanted to run, but Max 5 will work anyway because it's not like I'm doing speed with it. I was just going to bash with it. But if the other stuff does show up, great. We got uh, more parts for a different build. But if I never hear from that company, which sucks because it was the first time I'm ordering through that, uh, that hobby store. I try to support people on YouTube and hobby shops that are trying to do great things. I try to support them. But just like I've always said, whenever you order something through a hobby store, whether it's a hobby store or a part store or any of that, and they tell you stuff is on its way and stuff doesn't show up and you're not getting updates, um, it's pretty hard to trust that company. So all I can do is tell you guys my experiences and uh, my experience is I'll stick to the way I've been ordering parts because they tend to show up. So we got that, we got that, we got the big motor mount for it. Hopefully this will work. I don't know. Um, if it doesn't, the M2C Mitch Looper, M2C Racing, I can just order the stuff when I order the chassis. But meanwhile, we're going to do that. The other thing I was having a trouble with, let me, that's what this is. Let me uh, go through this real quick. Here is my Futaba. And with my Futaba, I have a range extender on it. And the first range extender I got was this one. So I got the big antenna with it. First, this kit came like this. So the way I would do it, I normally just run this antenna like this. And if I need longer range, I would just screw this on, screw my antenna onto it and call it a day. But this little piece gets really hot. It's only five volts and my range didn't extend that far. So I went out and got the bigger one, the 2000. So um, a lot of people run this range extender. This is five through 15 volts where this is a five volt one and you can see the size difference 
on these boosters. So I went ahead and got the bigger booster because, and that came with this black antenna. This white one came with this. Now when you do that, you have to modify your radio. So you got to take it apart, you got to order these things, which I always order in bulk, but I ordered the wrong end because I ordered I ordered it like this. So with the mail in there, they screw into the antennas. See how the uh, antenna is a female? So I ordered the male ones so that they can screw right into there. Not realizing that these things are male on both ends. I thought it would be male into female and vice versa. And then, of course, it doesn't screw in like that. So then I looked for an adapter to repair this and that didn't work. Now they do give you one that you can solder on and I was about to split this apart and solder and make this work but when it comes to antennas the length and the way it's set up is really important. So here is the factory antenna that I removed out of my Futaba. So I had to reorder a part that took, this part literally took, I want to say, two months to get, which I'm hoping, because we're opening up for the first time now, I'm hoping that this is the right one. So here we go. And the problem with this, you see the way I did this, so I am going to have to mount it like this. Because I mounted this into my factory antenna. This is my antenna holder, and I just, I leave it this way. I don't close it because I have my Velcro here, and this is where these things attach. Right in here with Velcro. Or it goes this way, and I attach the battery right here. But... Now I have this, which there's no way to mount it in here, not securely because it doesn't have a, a nut to lock it down in here. But at least I got the right one. Now these will not screw together, but I'll be able to, this should have an in and an out. Yes. So. This is our male, this is our female, this is our male. So this will screw right into this now. And my antenna will screw right in to this. Now I hooked all this up, not realizing what, what I did. And when I hooked all this up like this, because I did have like I said, I had the right end to go in here, so I did hook it all up. And when I was done, I realized, or I'm sorry, it was this one I hooked in. So I had mounted this one here, and when I just put the antenna on this one, I literally had no range. And I was shocked not realizing that I had two females going together. So I had literally taken my range and cut it down to nothing. So um, I've never really had my booster working. The antennas, I can guarantee you that this black antenna that comes with this just hooked into the radio made a huge difference to my range so I haven't really needed to uh, to boost it up but now that my car is above 130 
Um, I really do need the range now. So I'm glad that part finally came in. And I'm glad I'm now going to be able to hook that up as well. So I will be doing a video on how I do this um, on the Futaba because I won't split the radio all apart. I'm just going to be pulling off this cover and I can replace this without taking the whole Futaba all the way apart. This is my uh, 4PV. I love this radio. This radio is done really well. So and even with just doing the antenna mod is what I call it on the Futaba your range goes way up. So this is perfect for most speed runs. Um, I have, like I said, once I got up to the 130 mile an hour range, my shutdown, I have lost range once or twice because I've gone way too far away. So I'm going to solve that now with the booster that finally came in. So that was the other part that finally showed up. Now I do have a big unboxing for tomorrow, which I'm going to save for tomorrow. The other thing I wanted to talk about today was watermelon. I'm getting a lot of questions on what is in watermelon. I have done a build on this. And it's just a two-part series. One is where I bought the brand new RC and I converted it to low center of gravity and I did all that. The next video was me uh, painting the body. The first video, I cut it, I fit it, I made everything work and I assembled this RC. Um, then I did a video of me painting the body and then I did a video of me putting in the onboard audio system into this which I've been getting a lot of, lot of re, uh, people asking about my two-step onboard audio system. Um, it is all part of the onboard audio and I do use the sound to help me launch the RC. So as you guys see inside the body, I have the speakers mounted. This is something custom I did. Here it is. These are attached together. I cut them down. I mounted them in here myself and I used sound deadening to stop the rattling, which makes the speakers sound a lot better. Now under these speakers, there are foam pads. You don't want to mount these things directly. The thicker foam, the better. The better sound quality you're going to have. They do need to vibrate against the body to give that sound, but um, you don't want it too tight. And I just have bolts going through the roof on watermelon. So there's that on the body. Bring you guys in closer. So what have I done to this RC? The onboard audio kit right here. The remote control I'm using is off my Summit. So TRX4, Summit, this is your high-low switch. That's the high-low switch for swift sh sh uh, shifting between low gear and high gear. So, which is the TRX-4, not the Sport, the regular TRX-4 that has the low, high, and the lock uh, switching differentials, which comes with, here's your differentials. Just like the Summit. Summit has the same remote. You can bind this up to, I think it was 40 vehicles. So, if you have a TRX-4, um... All you need to do is buy the onboard audio kit. The onboard audio kit comes with the speakers, comes with this box here, and the wiring. And the way it wires into the receiver is channel two. You unplug it, it plugs into the onboard audio. The onboard audio plugs back into channel two. So when you flip that switch, it's like neutral. And all you're doing is holding the trigger down, flipping the switch, and the thing takes off and launches. And that's just for your onboard audio. And I use it as a two-step as a drag launch kit. As you see, I'm still running the VXL3S. I am running the factory transmission, factory slipper, 
factory gears. I've never taken this cover off. The Valenium motor, STRC wheelie bar, Proline motor mount or body mount. I added the Proline wheels, front and rear, and then I have added Proline shocks all the way around. And these are in the front. In the front here, these do have fuel tubing on the inside to limit front and rear. So, and I did this whole build. And I put a low center of gravity chassis on it because it was a high center of gravity. In parts, I spent with the body was $240 on top of buying a VXL slash. Now I have posted up, there is for $222, you can buy a VXL slash online used right now, body everything with the onboard audio with the remote controller was $222. But you would still need to convert it to a low center of gravity chassis. You would still have to buy the wheelie bar. You would still have to buy the shocks and you would still have to buy the wheels. So on top of the 222 that you would pay for that, there's $25 in shipping and then $240 into shocks, wheelie bar, wheels, tires, body, and low center gravity chassis. So basically for $500, you can have a watermelon too. So, and that's how much I spent. I spent, I think it was $564 doing this RC. Now you don't have to run the RPM front bumper like I'm doing. I just put it there in case I crash. There's some reinforcement behind this. Um, you can run a, a foam bumper. You can take the stock bumper that's here and trim it down to fit inside the body. Um, so that's it. Watermelon's a very basic, basic um, drag build. Um, so just wanted to put that out there that even in my video, I forgot about the shocks. Shocks are one of the most important things when it comes to making an RC launch the way you want it to launch. So, as you see here, I'm going to show you this. As you see here, I have less adjustment here than I have over here. I've tightened up this spring more and this one less. And same on the front. The front. Look how small that gap is. Look how big that gap is. So... I've got the spring set up on the left hand side, driver's side of this RC. I have them tighter because that's where the motor sits. Motor sits on your left hand side. The RC will actually lean to the left. So I have it stiffened up so when I launch, it launches straight. If I have it leaning when I go to launch, it's going to want to twist and do all kinds of funny things. And that's what's going on with, I believe, the DR10. I've done everything in my power with those shocks, changing springs, rebuilding them, putting straps in it, doing everything I possibly can to make that RC go straight. And it's close, it's just not perfect. So I am going to buy a set of Proline shocks for the DR10 as soon as I can figure out the lengths. And I will be putting Proline into that because that's the difference between all my slashes. Now I have run stock shocks which i think the mustang over here has stock shocks in it um actually yes i'm running stock shocks but i'm running proline springs so um yeah i don't remember which one i actually ran stocks oh the nova the Nova has the completely stock springs in it. So my Nova 2 right here, this one has stock shocks all the way around. So, and I have to use those little spacers in there to get it to sit right. So I am used to running those spacers. I'm just not used to factory springs changing tension every time you adjust them. So that's it.
for uh, this little update video um, updating you on watermelon and how my setup is um, these are just the stock body mounts I took them off and adapted here um, just so I can support the sides of the body in but yep here's watermelon I'm even running the 75 steering servo because steering is not that important when it comes to drag racing in my opinion a slow servo is a good servo but that's it you guys have now seen the new project coming up the coke can motor the mamba monster x 8s esc that we are going to be putting into a creighton 8s so stay tuned for that build thanks for watching and i'll see you guys on my next video take care guys